Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. I'm Brian David Johnson, the author of the Science Fiction Prototyping column in the IEEE Computer Magazine. And on this podcast, we have a a guest writer who was able to tell us about some of the work that he is doing on um, using with science fiction prototyping um, and how he's been using it in the work that uh, they have been doing at uh, Autodesk. I have to say, though, it's just been amazing to me to see how different people and different organizations have really picked up science fiction prototyping and started using it in lots of different places. And certainly we've chronicled that in this column as well as in this podcast. We've heard everything from people who are doing secret science fiction, our friends at Sci Futures who are using science fiction to come up with possible new products for their clients. Uh, certainly we've seen the work that myself and the 21st Century Robot crew have been doing with uh, science fiction prototyping and designing the future of robots. But also we've seen uh, micro science fiction prototyping. So this is science fiction prototyping in a limited amount of characters so that it can be sent out uh, through Twitter. And we're going to have some more about that um, in coming podcasts and coming articles. But this month, I really wanted to get a little bit deeper and invite the folks from Autodesk to be a part of the column. Autodesk is a uh, technology company based in Silicon Valley, but they have offices uh, all over the world. They're known by many people because of their uh, design products like AutoCAD. Um, they also do a lot of work on uh, motion pictures. Uh, but what many people don't know is that they have a lot of different design tools, um, even around things things like synthetic biology. So they're always looking for new areas where they can apply their expertise um, and their bench strength, but into new markets and new areas. And I think because of that, they've always been a big supporter of science fiction prototyping and the science fiction prototyping process and have used it for for many years. And just recently with the release of their most recent science fiction prototype called Four, F-O-U-R, it's four science fiction stories, science fiction prototypes kind of exploring different areas that Autodesk is looking at for their future and it has gorgeous gorgeous um, illustrations as well so in honor of that, I wanted to have them onto the podcast, and I invited Evan Atherton. Um, and Evan is a senior research engineer at Autodesk, and he's really been uh, a lot of the driving force behind these projects, along with Maurice Conti, um, who has also been in the, um, in the column before as well. So why don't we bring Evan on? Uh, I've got a few questions for him, and we can hear a little bit about more about what they're doing. Well, Evan, thanks for joining us on the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. Thanks for having me. This is my uh, first podcast, so I'm, I'm pretty excited. Well, we're really, really happy to, to have you here. So, so, Evan, you're a senior research engineer at Autodesk. Uh, t- tell us a little bit about uh, what you're doing and what you're working on. Sure. Um, so, first, I might just give a brief intro on Autodesk. A lot of people do know Autodesk for things like AutoCAD, but um, they might not be aware. Great. And so in your article that uh, you wrote for this month's IEEE Computer Magazine that we had you come in and help out with, um, you start talking about science fiction prototyping. What kind of work have you been doing with science fiction prototyping over the past few years? And one really good way that 
we've found to do that is by using science fiction prototyping. So uh, it kind of started um, in small doses a, a couple years back where we would, we would do, do little exercises at brainstormings and at, uh, we'd do little workshops. And we started to learn from people like yourself, people like Alex McDowell, that um, we, we could really apply storytelling to, um, to the work we're doing. So a couple of years ago, uh, myself and one of my colleagues, Arthur, uh, decided that we would pitch an intern project to kind of senior leadership. And our, our sort of premise was we thought we could have a couple interns come in and tell some stories that would be really useful for us. And so we, we put together a team of four interns with a bunch of different backgrounds. We had an architect, we had an industrial designer, we had a writer and an illustrator. Um, so we did a bunch of just kind of experimentation. So that the process itself was, was also sort of a prototype for us. So each week we would we would try out a new method of, of telling stories. We would try out new outputs, whether it was you know a, a short film or comic books or product design. Um, so I think we, we learned a lot then, and I, I talk about it a little bit in the article. Um, but I, I think it was enough to, sh to sh sort of show some other people around the company that this was a, a valuable thing for us to be doing. So uh, this past year, we, we did it a little more um, kind of formally even, where we set out saying, let's write a, let's do sort of an anthology of short stories that really show off uh, what we're trying to do at Autodesk and what, what we see, see the future as. So um, that's where four came from. Uh, so it's a collection of four short stories uh, where, where we kind of take a look at different time periods in our future. And uh, we, we mix in a lot, of, a lot of the stuff that's happening in research at Autodesk, um, but a lot of stuff that's happening um, in the world, like climate change and, uh, I don't know, autonomous transportation and Internet of Things and things like that. So... Uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's sort of our, our short history of, of how we've been sort of developing at Autodesk. How can people get access to 4? Uh, well, what's the best way for them to be able to, to see it? Yeah, 4 is it's now on iBooks for free. So if you search 4 by Autodesk in iBooks um, on an Apple device uh, or something with um, OS X on it, in the App Store, you can find that. And we're also in the process of getting hard copies on Amazon. Uh, I need to ship them some inventory right now. We're almost there. Um, but I can, uh, I can send you a link, and then uh, maybe you can disperse it, <laughs> disperse it for me to, to your, your viewership or your listenership. <laughs> that would be great. Yeah, so, so if anybody wants to get it, if they um, are on a, an Apple product, they just search F-O-U-R-4 by Autodesk, and they can get a copy of it. And then you can uh, keep coming back to the website here for the Science Fiction Prototyping column and podcast, and we'll make sure to, to post up that information when it comes. So I, one last question, Evan. So what do you think is the, the benefit of using science fiction prototyping as a tool? As you say, the work that you're doing is looking out towards the future of Autodesk, around the future of design, future areas, future blind spots. As you've been working with science fiction prototyping as a tool, um, what have you found the benefit to be? Yeah, I think, I think there's, a, there's a couple things that I really, um, really like about it that I think it, it gives us the ability to, one, just purely, purely explore how the tools we're building now can affect us in the future. Um, so things like um, uh, synthetic biology, to take an example. So we have a team here that is building design tools to help people program using kind of the, the natural laws. Um, so by programming DNA and things like that. So sometimes, you know, as I just described that to you, it's like a little bit dull, it's hard, hard to get a grasp of like, okay, why would someone need to do that? Um, but if we can put um, that sort of technology in the context of a story with real humans and see how they might actually interact with that in the future, um, then hopefully we can connect with people on a much deeper level. Sort of, um, sort of like uh, one of my favorite examples is the uh, the interface from Minority Report. Whether or not it's uh, you know a practical interface almost doesn't matter because people still talk about that. Had I just said, like, oh, yeah, one day in the future we'll be able to move stuff around with our hands um, on screen, 
scenes, it would have been like, okay, yeah, whatever. But seeing it in the context of that, you know, well-developed um, science fiction film puts you in a different frame of mind, I think, to um, to sort of see how the technology can affect us. And then, uh, so that's sort of the communication side of it. Um, and then, uh, yeah, just purely purely exploratory for us. So, you know, our our team, our our big mission right now is advanced robotics, and one one thing we're working on is human robot collaboration. So it's a way for us to explore. Okay, what what does that actually mean for us? Can we develop our own kind of uh, vision around this? And, and a great way for us is to start telling stories, um, start building worlds around this, and and help us. It almost is like a brainstorming technique to, to really try to understand what it means to interact with the robot in a different way than we're doing it now. So it helps us kind of disconnect from the work we're doing now uh, and kind of do a pure pure brainstorm around it. Um, so yeah, I think those are, those are the big ways. So one is exploratory and one, I think, is to communicate uh, to communicate a lot of the work that we're doing to, to others. Well, that's great. Well, listen, Evan, thank you so much for joining us on the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks again for having me. I think it's great to hear how people have taken science fiction prototyping and really made it their own. I think what, what Evan really pointed out that I think can help us all is that when Autodesk is employing the science fiction prototyping process, they're not only using science fiction based on science fact as a way to look at the human impact and ethical impact and all the other impacts, but they're even tinkering with the science fiction prototyping process itself. How can they tell stories? What's the best way to do it? Um, and I think that's, that's one of the things that is, I think, most inspiring about seeing the work that people are doing with science fiction prototyping is that they're taking the process itself, not only innovating using the process, but they're innovating the process itself. Um, and I think that is really what keeps it vibrant and alive and where really, really interesting, thing, interesting things will come in the future. And then similarly with uh, Evan's point that science fiction prototyping in any organization has so much power through story that narrative and story and the power of storytelling and specifically both the the narrative and visual power of storytelling can really reach out to people reach out to other domains reach out to other departments reach out to people who wouldn't normally maybe work with you or your department and the work that you're doing but it gives people that on-ramp it gives people that language to talk about the future and i think that um, is the, the bedrock, if you will, that sits beneath science fiction prototyping, that from the very beginning it has been used as a, as a way to make people be able to not only see the future and hear the future, but taste it and, and smell it as well. Well, I want to thank you again for joining us on the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. As always, if you have any information or any questions, you can always get in touch with me. Uh, you can get in touch with me at briandavid.johnson at frost.com. Um, you can also follow me on Twitter. I'm at BDJ Futurist. Again, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, if you have ideas for future columns, or you have science fiction prototypes that you would like to share, uh, we've gotten amazing ones over the past few years and I can't wait to see what happens. So we'll uh, talk to you next time on the Science Fiction Prototyping Podcast. Thanks everybody. Mm -hmm.